three of the pre-release event for Age of Ascension and Keyforge. Uh, we're doing some post-production here. Uh, John leads off with Binding Ardens, a, a new card that causes your opponent to gain three chains. Not really a friendly welcome to the game. Um, we're recording a commentary and doing our production after the fact uh, when we recorded this game last weekend. Uh, none of the cards were available online, and we thought, particularly as not a ton of people are familiar with the cards yet, it was important to, to be able to bring them up on screen for you. Also, uh, we don't know what a lot of the cards do, so being able to see the text when we're doing the commentary is important as well. So, playing Iger here lets him look at the top three cards of his deck, add one to his hand, uh, and discard the other two. Um, so yeah, uh, doing the pre-production on some of the overlay also allows me, when I'm recording the commentary now, to read some of the cards where I may not have been familiar with them uh, off the bat. We'll be bringing you a bunch of uh, Keyforge videos for the next few weeks. We recorded a, uh, all four rounds from this pre-release event, and uh, just yesterday actually recorded a bunch more at the release event at 401 Games. Uh, continues with his Logos turn, playing Titan Librarian and Professor Shatterkin. Titan Librarian is one of my favorite uh, new cards. When it's not in a thank, at the end of your turn, you get to archive a card. And Professor Shatterkin, you get to draw a card for each friendly Logos creature when you read. So just to gonna remember here uh, that he had uh, the chains from the binding chains, so he only got only should be getting one of those cards. So it's uh, nice to be back uh, playing a little bit of Keyforge. Uh, Victor and I haven't been playing a ton uh, a ton lately. Uh, I guess most of our playing time has gone to L5R. Also been taking a little bit of a break when it comes to recording videos. Uh, but we're getting back in the swing of things now. Have some L5R up on the site already. Keyforge coming at you now, uh, as well as the Prototype Toronto League playoffs coming soon for the, our uh, excellent viewers. John goes with a Dust Imp, uh, followed up uh, by a new card, or two is binding. Deal two uh, damage to a friendly creature, lets them connect, collect those two amber uh, immediately. From the, the destroy effect on the dust bin. Right, Alan goes with Bravnar, plays Smith, uh, gains to Amber if you control more creatures than your opponent, so a little free for him. And then uh, Drummer Knot, uh, followed by 1 2 Punch. 1 um, 2 Punch is just for the Amber, there's no creatures to, to stun out there. Uh, Drummer Knot uh, playing with the Errata, so. It is uh, affects. It bounces other friendly giants, uh, so it doesn't bounce himself right back. So you can actually play him without other giants in play. John plays Ronnie with Risk Clocks here, new card. Uh, steal one or two if your opponent has seven or more amber. Uh, Lumindra and uh, Knuckles Bolton. Uh, Lumindra has the new deploy keyword that lets her be deployed anywhere in your battle row, not just to the flanks. And it makes her uh, neighbors elusive. And then Knuckles just coming in with elusive and skirmish board. Well, I'm just debating on the house here. Looks like he's going to go with Logos again. We're playing with a bunch of things here fast. Playing Osmo, the Marginologist, who's elusive. And uh, heals when he fights or reaps. Uh, does a poke there, taking Lamindra out of play, which also allows him to draw a card. And then a Crazy Killing Machine, which uh, will come into play later, an artifact that lets you uh, potentially pop creatures off the board. His uh, Wild Wormhole reveals uh, Swindle. Swindle is both Alpha and Omega. It's a Shadows card, but because it's Alpha or Omega, and it wasn't the first or the last, well, it could have been the last card, I suppose, but since it wasn't the first card play, it's just returned to the top of the deck. Uh, now he gets to draw that, um, going down to uh, Swing Chain. Oh, sorry, no, uh, that's his draw off of Professor Setterkin. Uh, when he re reaped with Setterkin, he gets to draw one for each friendly Logos creature, which is let's see, four creatures. Looks like he's just going to follow up with uh, some more reaps. And then playing the ZYX Researcher, uh, which lets you archive the top card from your deck or your discard.
just going to use his Titan Librarian ability right now, figuring out after he draws which card he's going to archive. Starting to build up a little bit of a, a few cards there underneath his Archon. Also, have, looks like he has uh, eight Amber, so well positioned to forge a ring next turn, or forge a key. Pile of Skulls from John going Grobnar this turn. Yeah. It's a call from Carl the Archon, so familiar to some people, but whenever you uh, destroy an enemy creature, uh, a friendly creature captures one. So we'll play Grok. When he fights, your opponent loses one. Then a younger chieftain, so he can immediately do that. Takes care of the professor, who's going to be drawing it at a ridiculous number of cards every turn. Uh, and the pile of skulls. Loses one from uh, Grok, and then captures one, puts it on Knuckles, since it's both elusive and skirmish. Trying to decide if he's going to play the last uh, Brobnar card in his hand, but decides not to. Still plenty of Amber there for uh, Alan to forge a key. Thinking about whether he wants to pull a history card archive. It's always a question because with the librarian still in play, you're going to be building out your archive, so uh, you can leave it there for uh, a bigger turn at a later point. I mean, doesn't have logos cards in his hand at the moment, but with four logos on board, no, still going to go shadows. Pulls his archive. Plays lights out, gaining the amber and returning two creatures, two enemy creatures to the, his opponent's hand. I expect Knuckles will be one. Uh, Grok has damn it. I would probably go Grok, but it looks like he's going to go Ganger Chieftain. Uh, getting that captured amber back off of Knuckles. Oh, actually, some damage cards in his hand. That may be why he went with the Chieftain. Yep. Nerve Bass. Stealing one, doing two to Grok. And then he'll play Throwing Stars. So deal one up to up to three creatures. Gain one for each creature destroyed this way. He'll be destroying Grok. Uh, getting an Amber off of that effect. So he starts building up that archive again with Titan Librarian. Uh, I missed the card that he tapped under there. John hasn't had a chance to generate too much amber here. Needs to figure out what he's going to do now. Looks like he's got a mint full of shadow, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what he calls. Then uh, present Knuckles again. Uh, Ganji. So steals if your opponent has more amber than you when he reaps. Nerve Blast, familiar. Stole the amber, trying to decide where to put the damage. Going to take out the Martianologist. Reaps with Ronnie. Throwing Star. Going to kill Ronnie, so that'll give him an Amber. 
up to three creatures. Doesn't say enemy creature, so uh, good line of play for Johnny Spot. Does put him in position to forge a key next turn. Alan's going to go with Shadows here. Just going to go Swimble, Swindle. It's both Elf and Omega, so it's the only card you can play that turn. But it's a six Amber Swim, as you'll steal three from your opponent. Uh, puts Alan in a chance to forge here and uh, takes John out of it. So looks like Alan's going to be able to get to two keys before John's uh, forged his first. Uh, of course, that Titan Librarian's still around. Uh, just trying to decide which card he's going to archive here at the end of his turn. John's going with Shadows. He's going to be able to steal one with Ganji. Yes, he has more Amber. Uh, looks like he might have another throwing star in his hand, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great play with the throwing star. Three dead creatures, three Amber for John. So pile of skulls, it's a yeah. So we capture a bunch of amber here, uh, based on the pile of skulls. That's a pretty effective turn for John, uh, taking Alan away from forging and putting him comfortably ahead in amber. There's still a lot of delayed amber there captured on uh, John's two units, so that'll uh, come back to Alan eventually. Alan's choosing between Brobnar and Shadow here for this turn. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, looks like Shadows. Ronnie Wrist Clocks. Got more than seven, so stealing two is a pretty tough play to resist. And plays uh, Perplexing Sophistry. Uh, he doesn't have more amber, so it has no actual effect. It just gains him the one armor, uh, one amber for playing. John's going to go ahead and forge his first key here. John debating uh, what he's going to pull. He's discussing Germanot's ability. John knows he's still behind here, so taking some time, thinking this through, trying to make the best play he can. Join with Shadows. Do you think he gets a steal one with uh, Ganji? And uh, Michael's going to read. Okay. No cards played. So generating three amber and stealing one from your opponent and like taking one from your opponent in the process is pretty good. Signal Flyer. Uh, it's an artifact that is an Omni. You get to uh, basically crack it open to allow you to fight with Brobnar creatures uh, on a non-Brobnar turn. Roll up the Titan. It's a giant end allocation with 11 power. Uh, he deals no damage when attacked. So you can... Go in and beat him up without fear of reprisal, but he still can be uh, quite a pain in the butt. Uh, Iron Obelisk, an artifact that increases the cost of enemy keys by for every damage. Uh, Brobner creature, 
flamethrower, artifact, deal one to a creature with the splash. Uh, Grogan's eight power. He bounces it for no reason because he just reaped with Juggernaut. Gauntlet of Command, uh, last artifact uh, from the first set. Puts him in a position to forge. Also generates a, a, a very strong board for him. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I didn't really appreciate this before, but that flamethrower uh can make power up that fire obelisk. Because it does not seem like it's restricted to enemy creatures. And we know that a lot of the Brobnar creatures, though particularly the giants, are pretty big, so they can soak a lot of damage before being taken off the board. John's like, he doesn't want to take another shadow turn here, but if he reaps with Ganji, he's going to steal one, so he will delay that forge at least another turn. It's, you know, playing, it doesn't really advance his board position that much, but it does hold his opponent off, and, you know, without any change, it actually puts him up to six amber, but uh, his board is not moving forward while Allen's is getting quite wide. That is what it looks like he's going to do. Ganji for the steal and the reap, and then probably just a reap with Ronnie to put him at six. We'll see what Alan's going to do about this. When Logos? Logos? So plays Hexpion, backup copy onto the wrist clock. So when Hexpion's archived, she go or destroyed, she gets archived. And backup copy will uh, archive when it's destroyed. Yeah. So he flipped the logos card with the crazy killing machine, kills the X uh, Hexpion. So. It uh, is able to arc out itself. Wild wormhole. Yeah. So uh, something investments. I forgot what it is. It just gains the amber for playing the card. So John does get to forge here. Alan did nothing to stop that. But he's also got a, a pile of amber left to come back and uh, another three off of those shadow characters that he could potentially access. But they, they are elusive, so it's not the simplest thing to kill them. So if he was burning to gain an amber and dealing two to his uh, knuckles. That seemed like an odd choice with the flamethrower on the other side. Or Tony's Binding's also nice with uh, Anguish. Uh, if folks have seen that yet, it's another Beast creature. Ah, all right. No big deal. He's going to play gut Unlock Gateway anyways. Right here. Backup copy puts it at the top of the deck, not archive like I was saying earlier. Um, putting the three more captured amber into Alan's pile there um, seems crazy. But, I mean, with all of those creatures, that represented just as much uh, reaping anyways, so... So we'll see here if Alan can just uh, generate the a couple more amber on his turn to uh, put him over the edge here and maybe finish out this game. So 
deciding if he's going to go for his archives or not. Goes for shadows, just declines to take his archives, uh, which we know is Hexpion and uh, another card that I can't recall. Plays Knuckles, Mac the Knife. Dust Runner on Knuckles, allowing him to steal an Amber when he leaps. She turned Furtive Investors uh, just for the Amber because his opponent does not have more than he does. But that puts him in position to close up the game the next round with his last key. Rotano, Yurt, none of those are changing the... Uh, that's... Yeah, nothing that's changing the state of the game. So uh, it's a win for Alan, uh, third win of the event. So uh, thanks to both gentlemen for the good game. Uh, and we'll be back soon with uh, some more Keyforge videos.